The subject of this mini lecture is common ion problems. Um, we're going to be taking a look at uh, some solutions where we're mixing a couple of different solutions and trying to determine whether a precipitate will form. And this is a this is probably one of the more complicated types of the KSP problems that we would see. So this problem we have 740 milliliters of uh, 0.92 molar solution of lead to nitrate and we're mixing that with 411 milliliters of a 0.013 molar solution of calcium chloride and the question is are we going to get a precipitate of lead to chloride that will form from this and we're given the KSP for lead to chloride as 1.7 times 10 to the minus fifth so with these KSP problems um, the place to start is to do a balance equation for the dissociation of the compound we're taking a look at here. Now, uh, part of the problem with this particular question is we've got three different ionic compounds that we're looking at, but the one that we really want to do the balance equation for is the one that we have the KSP value for. So we'll put that right up here. And we have our lead to chloride solid. And when that is placed in the water and we have a sufficient amount of lead to chloride um, that will reach equilibrium with the lead to ion that will be in solution and two moles of our chloride ion in solution. So that's our first step to write the balance equation. Our second step that should always follow right on the heels is to write your KSP expression for this particular reaction. And here we have the concentration of the lead ion raised to its coefficient. Its coefficient is 1 raised to the 1. We won't bother to write it in there. We're going to multiply that times the concentration of the chloride ion raised to its coefficient. This time we got a coefficient of 2. We definitely want to write that in there. So now this is a little bit of a different type of KSP problem than we've talked about before. Uh, because in this case, our lead ion and our chloride ions are coming from different sources. Well, what we've got here is we've got one beaker that has 750 milliliters of the lead nitrate. So we've got our lead ions over here and we've got our nitrate ions in here. And we've got the second beaker where we don't have as much of our solution here. And this one has our calcium ions and our chloride ions in there. So we've got two different sources and we're mixing them together. So we, we don't necessarily have a, uh, a specific relationship between the, the lead ions and the chloride ions. We're going to have to calculate those individually. Now, with this type of a problem, let's get it out of the way. with this type of a problem, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate something called Q. And Q is calculating using the equilibrium expression, but the system might not be at equilibrium because the question we've got here is, do we have enough ions where we're going to exceed the amount? We're going to reach the saturation point. We're going to exceed it, and some of those ions are going to come together and form a precipitate. Or will we have an unsaturated solution that's not even at equilibrium? So our Q expression is exactly the same equation as our KSP expression, it's just that when we plug our numbers in, we may find that we're not truly at equilibrium because we don't have enough of our ions present. So the big question is now, what numbers do we plug in here? We've got to find our concentration of the lead ion, and we need to find our concentration of the chloride ion. And this gets to be a little tricky, tricky because we know what the concentration of the lead ion is in the lead nitrate, but we're mixing with another solution and we're changing our volume basis for it. So our first step is really to find out how many moles of our lead ion do we have? That's really the, the first question that we want to answer. So in order to answer that, we will start out and say, well, we know we've got 0, 0.0, let's take just one zero, I'm sorry got 0 0.092 moles of lead nitrate per liter of that solution. 
Well, how many solution, how many liters did we bring in? Well, we brought the 740 milliliters, but before we even get there, we should say something else here, and that is uh, we need to make sure that we're accounting for the ion properly. And in this case, we are getting one mole of lead two ion for every one mole of our lead two nitrate. Now, mathematically, that may not seem like we did very much there with a one for one, but it's really important in our dimensional analysis, and we'll see when we get to the chloride ion, it's not always a one for one, so you want to make sure you're doing that step. Our next step now is to say, well, how many, how many liters of our solution that had that lead ion in it, how many liters did we bring in? Well, we brought in 740 milliliters. That's the same as 0 0.7400 liters. We calculate that number out, and we find that we have 0 0.06 eight one moles of our lead ion. Now we'll come now at this point we have to say well let, let's find out what our concentration is of the lead of the lead ion once we mix our solutions. Because once we mix our solutions we're gonna have seven hundred and forty milliliters of one solution and it's mostly water. There's very little of anything else so it's going to pretty much keep the same density of water and we're not going to change the volume too much uh, because most of these both of these solutions are almost entirely water once we mix those two solutions together of 1150 milliliters or 1.151 liters so at this point we say, well, if we want to find out our concentration of the lead ion, once we mix these two solutions together, we're going to say that is equal to 0 0.0681 moles of lead 2 ion per 1.151 liters of solution. And we are going to find that our lead ion concentration is now 0 0.0592 molar for the lead ion. Well, that's going to be important because when we plug that into our, our Q number, our first number that we need to plug in here is that concentration of the lead ion. So we'll plug in that we've got 0. 0.0592 molar and now what we need to do is find out what is going to be the concentration of our chloride ion so we will go through a similar calculation for the chloride ion and before I do that I'm going to be erasing all this information for the lead so if you want to write this down you may want to pause the video now and get this written down Now we're going to find out the concentration of the chloride ion. Well, with the chloride ion, we know we need to, our first job. We want to find out how many moles of the chloride ion we've got so we can put it on that same basis. And I probably shouldn't have erased this, but we had the, I just want to make note that we had the one point. Let's try that again. It's starting to look like one o'clock. One point one. Five one liters of solution after we mix them. So we're going to keep that in mind. We know we've got the, the that volume after we mix it. We need to find out how many moles of the chloride ion. Find the moles of the chloride ion. We're going to start with our 0 0.013 molar, our molar solution of our calcium chloride. And that's moles per liter. Now this time we know that when we put calcium chloride into water we're going to get 
one mole of calcium ion, but we're going to get two moles of the chloride ion. There's, there's two chlorides in there. So remember a minute ago I said that um, we needed to include this step, and before it was a one-for-one, one, so mathematically it didn't seem like we did anything. This time it's not a one-for-one. One. We've got to put in there that we get two moles of the chloride ion for every one mole of calcium chloride. And now we can multiply it by its volume. The 411 milliliters is 0 0.4110 liters of solution. And so now we can calculate that once we multiply that all out, we've got 0 0.0107 moles of chloride ion. Okay. That's important because now we can... We can come down here and say, well, the concentration of our chloride ion, once we've mixed these two solutions together, is equal to 0 0.0107 moles of chloride versus, or divided by our, and my smart board is not responding at the moment, but it's going to be divided by our 1.1. Uh, 5, 1 liters, and now it's really responding, so let's fix that, divided by our 1.151 liters of solution, which leads us to a concentration of the chloride ion that is equal to 0 0.00930 got the chloride ion concentration, we can come up above here and plug that into our equation up here and say we've got 0 0.00930 molar and we have to remember to square this term now because in our KSP we, we square it. So we're now again we're calculating the Q which is uh, just like the KSP but it might not be at equilibrium. And now we can calculate that. And so now that we've got our numbers for the molarities up here, I'm going to go ahead and erase all this. Get that out of the way. And when we do our math here, we find that our Q, our Q number here, is equal to 5.1 times 10 to the minus 6. Now, what we have to do is we have to compare the Q to the KSP value for our lead to chloride. And we find that if Q is less than the KSP, there is not there is going to be no precipitate form. If we find that Q is greater than the KSP, we will form a precipitate. So in this case, when we care, compare our Q to our KSP, our KSP was 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5th, we find that this is less than the KSP, which means we're not going to form a precipitate. In other words, the concentrations of our, of our lead ion and our, and our chloride ions, when we multiply them together, we just didn't have enough to get to the saturation point. And so in this case, we truly weren't at equilibrium. We didn't have enough to form our solid.